Gemini Flash, I did my introduction and kind of my first impression video. It's already on the channel. If you haven't seen it yet, the link should be somewhere on the screen, I think. If not, check out the description as well. In this one, I want to show you how easy it is to start coding with uh, Gemini Flash as well. And it might be a little bit uh, intimidating at the beginning because we've got Google Cloud uh, Console with Vertex AI and we've got Google AI Studio. And where to start? I hope to answer that question in this video. And later on, I want to show you a quick start how you can develop your first application with Google AI Studio. And later on after that how to do it the same with google vertex ai since it is a little bit different especially when it comes to authentication now if you don't want to watch everything it's perfectly fine just check the timestamps in the description of this video and navigate to the section of video you are most interested in all right i hope you're gonna enjoy it have fun google ai studio that's our first option to start working with uh, gemini flash uh, it is a browser-based ID for prompting with generative models, and it's super easy to start with. Uh, you can choose which model you want to work with. You can simply generate API keys, and I will show that in details a bit later. And you can start prototyping, and once you've got some prototype, you can get code to get the you know template of your code, and later on modify that to your needs. And I'll show that in a couple of minutes as well. Mm, the second option is access the uh, Gemini Flash from uh, console from Google Cloud. Here we've got to navigate to Vertex AI Studio, and that option is a bit more enterprise ready. It's much better with scalability and it's much better with integration with other uh, Google Cloud services. For example, if you want to host your application on serverless like Cloud Run or Cloud Function or on Kubernetes via Google Kubernetes Engine and of course more, much more beyond that. Um, you can choose on which region you want to execute your um, workload, which is great because if you need or you want, for example, keep data in a specific region, it's very easy to do with Google Cloud. Even though the interface looks different, and by the way, I'm also waiting for the dark theme, uh, it has very similar functionality. You can uh, prototype your application over here. You can take advantage of get code to kind of have the first draft of your application and later on use it to your needs, which by the way, we are going to do in this video later on. And the access to the model is done via identity and access management, which again is more enterprise ready compared to just using uh, API keys. And it might be much more secure with fine grained access to either users or service accounts. And one more detail I want to mention about is pricing. For Google AI Studio, depending on your region, you might be able to use it for free if you want to. But remember, with free uh, tier, there are some uh, limitations and uh, your prompts and responses might be used to improve the product. Or you might go as a paid user, pay as you go, obviously where your prompts and responses are not used to improve the product. Mm, and the pricing is via, done via 1 million tokens in and out, obviously, right? So pretty straightforward. For Vertex AI, it's also straightforward, but a little bit different. Here you are uh, built via you know, single image, second of video or audio, and 1000 characters. And there are some approximations how to compare those two prices. I just want you to know that pricing as of today, as of the moment of recording the video, is a little bit different between those two options. All right, I think now it's time to start prototyping our first application, right? So let's start with uh, creating a simple application, let's say chatbot in a command line interface. I like to start with sending the first uh, request to the uh, model to see how that looks like in the code. Once this is done, I can take advantage of get code, copy Python code because I'm going to use in Python, but make sure that you copy the language you want to use. And here, uh, open your favorite uh, code editor, and uh, I will use Vim just to you know make it simple. Paste the code, and as you can see, the code is in. And uh, at the beginning, in the comment section, it actually tells us what package is necessary, which is Google Generative AI. So let me copy the command and just make sure the package is also installed in my station. 
All right, great. I think there's one more uh, requirement for me, which is to make sure that Gemini API key is available in my environment, which is not for now. So let's do that. Let's generate a new API key so you can see how simple that can be done and add it to, to my environment as well. So going for create API key, uh, selecting on which project because different billing might be used on different projects, right? And uh, click generate API key. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to show it to you, but you have to believe me, it's there. You can copy the full API key and uh, set it up on my station. Uh, so for that, I'm going to use export um, command on my mm, you know, Linux environment, which is not really production ready because it would not survive between reboots of the machine. But for now, for prototype, I think it's, it's perfectly fine. And we are all set. I think we are ready to execute the application. So we are executing exactly what uh, happened or what was provided to us. And we've got some response. It's a little bit weird, maybe, but we've got the response. And the reason why is it so weird is that we actually, on line 67, you can see we actually send a message set inset input here. So that's why the model acted as it acted. So let me create an infinite loop when we are going to ask user for input and a message. Since this is an infinite loop, it would be nice to have an uh, exit from it. So if user puts exit, make sure we exit the loop. And then uh, our response from the model and the printing of the response should be within our loop, right? And the last chance, the last um, think we have to change. We don't want to send insert input here. We actually want to put input here. So it's under user input. And that's it. Straight uh, as it is, I think we are ready. Let me execute the uh, chart again. I've got enter message. Let's ask what 7 plus 7. Within uh, a second, I've got, I've got the answer from the model. Let's try some a bit more complicated math. And also the uh, responses on the screen and maybe one more question was the distance between Warsaw and New York uh, just you know just for fun just to see that the model can uh, answer different questions and we've got nice answer and let's press exit to exit our loop and that's our first prototype of working application outside of you know Google AI studio with using uh, API keys and in my prototype, I used uh, Ubuntu environment to run the application, but obviously you can use it in Windows or Mac OS or any other system that, you know, have Python installed with proper library, which we, by the way, installed a couple of minutes ago. And yeah, um, so Ubuntu is just example, right? If you prefer Windows, you can work 100% in Windows environment as well. Okay, let's try to build something similar in Vertex AI. And for that, the authentication is different. So I will make sure I've got Google Cloud command line interface installed. And I will authenticate the application default uh, login. So whenever there's a um, request to Google Cloud APIs, it will use the account I will specify here. And for that, I'm going to use my account it will require me to pass a kind of one-time authentication token. And for the sake of best practice, I'm not going to show it as well, even though it will be outdated once you see it. Anyways, once the authentication is done, I have to check now if my user has appropriate permissions to execute this type of workload. Let's quickly check that in the documentation page. We can go either for predefined role, which might have a bit broader access than necessary or create the custom role with only necessary uh, permissions. But for the sake of this demo, I will go with the predefined role and in the identity and access management page, you can see that my user has already a proper role assigned. Okay, so right now I think we've got everything we need to start prototyping and uh, execute the application on my workstation as well. So let me navigate to Vertex AI. And since we are going to create a chatbot on the uh, multi-model section, I will go with a multi turn prompt design, so chat design. Mm, the model is proper. I can change the region, but that's okay for now. And again, let's execute the first, uh, you know, command the first prompt just to see how that looks like in the code. 
and once this is done we can take advantage of the get code uh, option and you have to pay attention that the different uh, libraries are being used here so it tells me how to authenticate that's done and what uh, library to install so let me first install the library and as you can see I already had an older version than that so this is being updated which is good right in the enterprise solution you probably want to have control of which version you are using not necessarily the latest one nonetheless let me uh, copy the code base and let's paste that to the file called vertex ai and uh, let's uh, you know paste everything and it should work out of the box right uh, what is being sent is being sent hello and uh, we should get the response for that so let's uh, go ahead and verify that as you can see there is a uh, function the mm, defined called multi turn generate content that is being executed in line 33 and on line 13 14 uh, 15 16 it exactly tells us what's being sent to the model so let's save it and execute the mm, file and we've got this error and i have to admit i was working and uh, troubleshooting that for longer that i'm ready to admit the problem is that i called my file vertexai.py and there's also an uh, import called vertexai so the import instead of importing the library was trying to import my file Anyways, once the file is renamed, I can execute the code and see uh, the response. The response is a little bit bigger because besides the chat, I've got some additional details, which might be very useful in you know more advanced application. But in this case, I don't need all those details. I just need the response from the chat. So first, let's not print it directly. Let's save it to the response uh, variable. And then uh, we're gonna uh, print the response variable. Mm, I think it's a little bit more elegant and the uh, chat send message is returning the object that has property text and property text will always only uh, gives us the response of the uh, model not the whole details and we can execute that that works as a charm so we've got almost everything ready uh, to create the chat application we still have to you know create some kind of loop and I'm going to go with uh, infinite loop again and make sure that uh, our response what we send to the model etc are executed in the loop so uh, proper indentation need, uh, here is needed mm, you know python right and then uh, let's make sure that user can actually uh, give the input we don't want to send hello in the loop right <laughs> so first user input is going to be input with some uh, message like enter message and again uh, just to make sure we can exit our infinite loop if user puts exit let's make sure the loop can break so exit the infinite while loop and once this is done uh, we are almost ready we don't want to say hello every single time we want to send user input and that should do the trick with that small change we should have working chat application that can be executed from command line as well so let's try it let's run it and we've got our enter message uh, field so we can ask the model how is he she it doing today and once we've got the response we can ask some other question for example tell me something interesting about bumblebees and uh, the screen is a little bit zoomed in so we can see the messages cut on the right side but just that's the editing video right so uh, let's ask the model to make a poem out of, out of it and i think it's pretty cool uh, at least very fast let me know what you think about the quality in the comment section and we can exit the application now before we conclude let's do one more thing uh, those two applications were very very basic right but my goal for today is to show you how easy it is to start now let's assume you want to take advantage advantage of some system instructions so again i will put this is a system instruction only to see how that looks like in the code right so i don't have to modify my whole program i can just modify the appropriate lines to add the system prompt and with system prompt we can change how the model reacts to our 
you know, queries. So it might be like a friendly assistant. It can summarize some text for us. It can check the grammar. It can, you know, answer some questions or, you know, create some uh, creative content out of our prompt. And uh, to get that possibility in our application, I will uh, modify it a little bit and change the way the model is being initialized with that additional line of code. Uh, let me remove the older initialization and we've got our system instructions ready. Now, to instead of having prefixed this is a system prompt, let me add to my function multi turn generate content a new variable a personality with default value so whenever you call it without that uh, variable that's also fine you are a friendly assistant and we are going to pass that personality right so not big change in the code but a big change in the functionality now this is ready uh, when we call our function and i think that was called in at the end of this program uh, we can define what's the personality obviously we could add functionality for user to specify the personality every single time uh, but we want to make it fixed now I noticed that it's a little bit hard to see what user is sending versus what um, AI is returning. So let's change a little bit how we print the response and print the queries. And at the end of this program, let's, uh, well, use some different personality. For example, uh, let's trans let, let ask the model to translate everything that we push to the model to Spanish and we turn only the Spanish translation, right? So in this case, we are just creating a simple translator. And let's run it and ask some queries to verify if that works. The first one is, I wonder if I have any Spanish speaking viewers. If I do, let me know in the comment sections and section and let me know what you think about this translation. And maybe the other one, just to show you that this is a still kind of multi-turn uh, discussion. Uh, I wonder if anyone noticed a different uh, timestamp in the prompt because I came up with the second idea actually the next day. So the prompt changed a little bit. All right, so that works as, like a chime as well. Obviously, in your applications, your system instructions might be much more complex. Okay, that seems like a good place to finish for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you know how to start uh, working on your own projects. Uh, be sure to check out my channel from time to time. In future videos, I'll try to uh, give you an example how to use multimodal functionality and perhaps deploy such uh, application on some serverless solution, let's say Cloud One, uh, using service accounts, right? So having a more secure uh, authentication methods implemented as well. For now, thanks for watching and have a great day. In case of any questions, use the comments section. I'll do my best to address them all. Bye.